What's going on reefers, Blaine here. In today's video, we're gonna change up the pace and we're actually gonna be sticking around and hanging out in the studio. We've been going around doing tank tours, doing tank installs, but today I thought better yet, let's hang out in the studio, check out what's been going on with the Innovative Marine 15 gallon and also the Red Sea Reefer 250. Let's dive in. Well, I thought no better place to start off our studio tour than with the first project we had at the Top Shelf Studio. This is the Innovative Marine 15 gallon Nuvo Fusion. I'm loving this tank. It's been really fun to see develop. And as you guys can tell, it's very dynamic, very unique, whether it be the rockscape, the air plants. Let's actually flash back in time when we added in the air plants with Kevin. All right, so we're back here with the Innovative Marine 15 gallon. You guys have seen, we've added in some corals. We've added in the first fish and you guys have asked in the comments what the plans were for the rockscape up above the water column. So today we're gonna be talking about what we're gonna be doing with the rockscape. So I'm gonna hand it over to Kevin. Yeah, so obviously this is a pretty unique setup um, with the rock suspended and, and hanging. Uh, we really wanted to see how we can sort of open up the way people would be working on, you know, aquascaping and decorating an aquarium. You can kind of take some of the concepts from what some people are incorporating into paludariums and terrariums and things like that as far as having actual live plants. Hopefully all the coral will have nice little nooks and crannies and get plenty of light for their success. And in addition to that, we get enough spotlight effect here from the hanging pendant to keep the plants happy as well. Obviously you can't have uh, you know roots or anything like that because we're putting them on dry rock. So we decided to go with air plants, a more effective way to kind of fix them in some more dramatic areas. Now we don't usually use something like regular old super glue or tape or anything like that. You know a rubberized E6000 glue is something that's worked really well for me in the past. And I've used this on um, you know, another aquarium here and the office tank and the freshwater aquarium that I have at home. So that guy, you would put a simple little dab either on the plant itself or on the rock or both, lock it into the location you want. Now you don't want to get the glue inside where it's going to mess with the plant itself or hurt the new growth just on some of the flatter areas where it's not going to cause any uh, trouble there and then actually use some pipe cleaners to fix it in place long enough for the glue to solidify and then we can go ahead and um, take them off within 24 hours or so sometimes less and they'll stay put and now with the plants on the scape, we've started to plant some corals as well on the underwater side. It's really cool to see his ideas kind of coming to fruition and coming alive. I have to say big shout out to Kevin for once again, kind of breaking one of those barriers here in the hobby. He loves to kind of push the limits and go to that crazy next level. And this scape is definitely doing it. So been really cool to see the air plants in here. We actually have one budding right here. We have a little baby. So exciting to see that they're doing well. But let's talk a little bit about the tank itself. Let's talk about some of the new fish that have gotten added in, and let's talk about some of the corals as well. When it comes to the fish, we had the original two pair of storm clowns. They're doing great, they're doing really well. I have to say for a good couple weeks, they were fighting quite a bit and they still kind of maintain the same size differential from one another, but it seems like one of them is a little bit bigger than the other. And I think that determination between male and female is finally starting to happen. The new fish that we added in though are some really cool ones. We added two little blue assessors. These guys are awesome. They hang out at the bottom and on the underhangs of the scape all the time. They're swimming upside down, which is also really cool to see. Very unique, and I really do love having them in the tank. They blend really well in with the back side of the system, so sometimes you kind of lose them, but they always pop up every once in a while, and they're really cool to see. The other fish we added in as well was a tailspot blenny, and he's actually living in a really perfect hole right in the middle of the scape. We were hoping that he wasn't gonna find a hole that was hidden away and tucked away in the scape and he ended up finding one right in the front. So we get to see them all the time. And as you guys know, if you guys have ever kept a Blenny, they are very unique and very quirky. They have awesome personalities. And this guy is always out and about staring at me, looking at me, looking at anyone walking through the studio. And it's really fun to have one in the system. Let's jump into some of the corals. Now, when it came to the corals, 
we've been adding in some testers, we've seen some success, we've seen some things not go as well, but we got really excited about some of the little success we got out of some of the acans. So we ended up doing a little acan garden right here down at the bottom and it's coming together super nice. We are battling a little bit of hair algae in here. We ran into some dinos as well. We did a full blackout on this system, but we're starting to run in a little bit of hair algae. We have beefed up the cleanup crew even more and it's just gonna take a little bit of time for us to work through it. Now, everybody remember, the best cleanup crew member is yourself. You are the herbivore. So getting in there, cleaning up these tanks yourself is the best way to go after any pest algae problem. Other corals that we've added in was this highlighter gani that's doing really good up top here, right here in the top. We've added in an utter chaos as well. We've got a lot of really nice corals that we've added in and it's good to see that they're doing well. There's a Bernardopora that we added in, not super happy right now. So we're kind of trying to figure out maybe it's the flow in that direct area, maybe it's the lighting. We we are playing with a very unique scape and how it's kind of shading out some of the structure or shading out the tank. And we're also playing around with some interesting flow patterns too, right? We have a lot of rock scape that's overhanging arms and things like that. So we have to play around with the flow quite a bit. We think we've dialed it into a point where we're happy. Evan and I over in the farm have really been working hand in hand on this project. And I have to say, we have kind of started to fall in love with this little tank. It's a hard project to work on, but that's the fun of it. That's part of the reefing hobby. So really cool to see this innovative marine kind of coming together. We've got a lot of really great coralline growth happening. So once again, we seeded coralline from over in the top shelf farm. We've seeded it into our tank and you can see it's starting to take off really well. I have to say, loving the innovative Marine 15. Really cool to see the first project here in the studio starting to develop and starting to grow out kind of watching ourselves grow out together. So really cool to see whether it be the channel or this tank, things are heading in the right direction. Let's go ahead transition now and hop over to the Reefer 250 and see what's been going on. We are over here with the Red Sea Reefer 250. This is a project that I've been very excited about doing here in the studio. Once we were able to get this all set up with Greg and then finally getting it wet and getting the cycling going with Taras. All right, we are here in the studio next to the Reefer 250 with Taras. Taras has brought over a nice collection of aquacultured things from our farm. I'm really excited to allow Taras to kind of go over the group that we're gonna be putting in, but I wanted to let you all know that we're gonna finally be adding in some cleanup crew. The cycle of the tank is done, the lights are on, and so now it's time to start adding critters. So I'm gonna let Taras take it away and kind of showcase and talk about all the amazing things that we you know, have created it here at Top Shelf and we're going to be adding into the tank. Well, Blaine, um, this is my favorite time when the aquarium is new and the possibilities are limitless. So it's also the part where we as the aquarists have the greatest contribution to the future of the tank. So let's get it started by giving it some good, robust uh, starting off uh, cleanup crew pilgrims. So everything you see in this bin, with the exception of the blue leg hermit crabs and the trochus snails, were actually born in our facility. Let's start off by going through kind of the different categories we addressed in our cleanup crew video. So everything here is pretty much represented. We have our pickers, in this case represented by the blue leg hermit crabs and to another degree, the amphipods in the tank. We also have a variety of different snails stomatellas and trochus snails for a variety of different radular sizes and a variety of different gut infrastructures that they can efficiently feed on and digest different types of algae. Um, we also have in here some colostema snails, which are another smaller uh, variant of the snails, but another one that reproduces readily in the home aquarium. Uh, moving on towards things that are moving, again, more surface grazing as well that aren't snails. We have some micro brittle stars here of a couple different species, some smaller white ones and some larger banded ones. And then working the sand bed itself, we also have some dove snails, which reproduce readily in the aquarium, but are responsible for cleaning out uneaten feeds that are below the surface of sand and other substrates. So to support all of these different cleanup crew and act as their own micro cleanup crew and then later live feeds for a variety of different fish and corals that we have. We're also gonna be including some Harpacticoid copepods. Tisby venomiensis, very hardy copepod species that likes to stay out of the light, crawl in the crevices of live rock and specializes in consuming detritus, une uneaten feed and pesky algae biofilms. We are relatively deficient in food for all these critters. So to start building uh, the nutritional orchestra, if you will, we're going to start with a foundation of microalgae. And in this case, T. isochrysis lutea for its golden fats and Tetracelmus chui for its cholesterols and its ability to survive and persist in 
a reef tank uh, for prolonged periods. So as Taras is adding in this phytoplankton, I would like to kind of harp this and really drive this home to all of you guys at home watching. All of these things, other than the trochus and the blue legs, as mentioned, are all aquacultured here on site. And Taras takes great pride in what he does, and I take pride in it as well. What he does is amazing work, and what he's able to provide to you guys for cleanup crew is something that you can take your reef to the next level. Sometimes people forget and just think, oh, we'll toss a couple trochus in there. You have to have a multi-layered attack, so all these kind of different cleaners are gonna be super important for you at home to add to your reef aquarium. So if you guys are looking to add any of these today to your tank, head over to our website and you can see all the deals that we have available for our live foods and for our aquacultured inverts. So thanks again, Taras, for bringing all this over. Let's go ahead and start tossing these guys in. Let's do it, Blaine. It's been a lot of fun seeing this develop over time. I wanted to talk a little bit about all the changes that have occurred over the past couple months, get you guys all up to date what's going on in the Reefer 250. As I mentioned before though, the cycle has come and gone and we ended up running into a little bit of some dinos at one point. So we did a blackout stage on this tank, but for now everything's looking really good and we ended up getting a nice group of fish in here. We ended up quarantining them in our top shelf farm facility and we ended up going with a group of three chocolate basses we have a group of five firefish the red firefish we have a banded possum wrasse and we also have a starry blenny so a lot of really cool fish in here we're excited to be adding in some more fish here in the near future we're gonna be getting a tang in here as well I'm looking to maybe get a bristle tooth species in here something that's gonna be a little bit smaller but something we can add in to be a little bit of a worker I don't know if you guys can see though we have a really broad cleanup crew in this tank it goes all the way across the board from turbo snails to astrias to a big harlequin serpent star to even the conchs in the sand bed. We have all kinds of different things in this tank helping make sure the cleaning is getting done. We've had to add into this cleanup crew a couple times to kind of robust it, make it a little bit bigger. But over the course of time, we've seen that the crew we have in here now with the kind of allotted different species have worked out really well for this tank. We'll go ahead and get into some of the corals now. So we were lucky enough to come back from our trip from Pennsylvania. We were up north working on a tank installation, doing tank tours and all kinds of awesome content that's gonna be coming soon. But Kevin was kind enough to get some tester corals in here. I didn't have the opportunity to film, as you can tell, very happy about that. But we weren't able to film and showcase that all going down, but we ended up adding in a bunch of rock flower anemones that they look really nice. We've got this big plate coral here in the front. We've got a mushroom in the back. We've also got a pectinia here, a gani, some zoas as well. There's a nice assortment of corals in here. We wanted to get a nice range to get a good testing going. As you guys know, we added in a bunch of corals into the 15 gallon, but we wanted to get some corals in here to get some real good testing going on and to make sure everything's kind of heading in the right direction. We want to make sure our trajectory is good. And right now, looking at all the corals that have been in here for a couple weeks at this point, things are looking really, really great. We've seen over the course of time, Kevin makes some absolutely crazy rock scapes. I've really loved seeing this scape though inside this Reefer 250. I was wondering originally whether there would be enough space for fish to hide and be enough areas for them to swim around. And to my surprise and to Kevin's, you know, idea from the start, there is more than enough space for them. I mean, we see the Blenny going in and out of the rock all the time. The firefish are jumping in and out as well as the chalk bass. And I think they're really enjoying kind of the dynamic scape, the areas to swim through and the different breaks of vision for them as well. I think overall this scape has been really cool to see develop. And we're starting to see a little bit of coral line starting to poke up here and there. So we're gonna continue to add in coral line from our systems in the farm, seeding it onto this scape. So that way we can get it nice and colored up with some nice purple coral line. And then we can really start filling in with corals. When it comes to flow in this system, I think we're getting more than enough flow. With this gyre right here, we're actually getting some really great linear flow happening at the top of the tank. It probably will get adjusted as we see more corals coming into the system. Once you have more corals entering into a tank, you wanna try and figure out what the best kind of flow is for that system. We're trying to dial it in now, but as we add in our tester corals, we'll get a better idea of what we're really looking to get out of not only the return pump, 
but the gyre as well. We have actually an upgraded size of the return pump on the Red Sea Reefer 250. So really nice to have that little extra oomph when it comes to getting flow throughout this system. And I have to say, overall, it seems like we're getting some really good flow for the current tester corals and for the fish to enjoy themselves. So overall, really happy with the equipment. The reef mat has been out of this world. I have to say the reef mats are some awesome pieces of equipment. I know when it comes to more of an industrial side of it, like a farm space or something of that sort, we're not gonna be really enjoying using reef mats to kind of change them out all the time. But I think for, you know, the hobbyist level, I think, you know, a single tank, tanks like this, I think the reef mat is the perfect kind of piece of equipment to add into a system to get that crystal clear water and also make things look nice and clean in this tank. And with that, we've given you an update on the two tanks in the Top Shelf Studio. I want to let you all know, I know this video isn't the most glamorous. We're not out installing a thousand gallon tank. We're not in the farm checking out our Unreal facility. We're doing something a little less glamorous, something that's more raw, and just hanging out here in the studio and giving you all updates on the tanks. You know, it's not easy to get a system up and running and you're not going to have a beautiful reef tank overnight. And that's something we want to remind you guys here at Top Shelf Aquatics that even us with all the coral and all the facility that we have here, it still takes time to get these tanks developed and get them running. I want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in all the way throughout the course of this video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads.